Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome tonight to our Christmas program. We're so glad that you chose to be with us tonight. Isn't it good to be in the Lord's house? Three of you. Isn't it good to be in the Lord's house? Amen. Amen. Turn your neighbor and tell them Merry Christmas tonight. Amen. Oh, this year is much better than it was last year. 2020 was kind of a rough year for a lot of folks, but uh, thank God everything is seemingly doing a little bit better this year. And we're so glad to have all of you here tonight. We want to welcome you. Pray that you will just enjoy this program. I've seen it yesterday. Uh, you're going to laugh a little bit, cry a little bit, and, and you're just going to have a great time tonight. So welcome. Glad to see everybody. One announcement I would like to make, though, at the end of this program tonight, we have a gift for everyone when you leave tonight. And then, but we don't want you to leave. We want you to get your gift. We want you to go in the fellowship hall and join us for some refreshments and some fellowship tonight. We've got plenty of food for everybody that's here. So stay with us after the program. We're going into the fellowship hall and have a great time of fellowship and a good time and enjoy some uh, refreshments. Are you ready for the play? God bless you and Merry Christmas. You there? Yeah, you. See anything suspicious around here? No? You, what about you? You see anything suspicious? Aha, there, what's that? Oh, oh, it's, it's just a red sweatshirt. Oh, for, for a minute there, I thought it was a, well, I'm not allowed to say. Crazy Penguin, this is Wool Pajamas. It appears the barn is now secure, over. Roger that. Sorry about that, folks. Didn't mean to frighten anyone. You're probably wondering who I am. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. They call me Lammy. Sammy Lammy. And while it's probably not obvious to you, I'm a detective. Yep, that's right. I work undercover, talking to sources, gathering information, finding out what's what. I probably know things about you that you don't even know. I'm pretty sneaky. I blend in. One minute you see me, the next you don't. Yes siree, I get around all right. I've seen a few barns in my day, I don't mind telling you. Big barns, little barns, Barnes and Noble, Pfft. little barn humor there. You know, this place actually reminds me of one of my favorite barns that I ever hung around in. It was a stable actually, but kind of the same thing. And one night, a long time ago, Man, some crazy stuff shook down in that stable. Would you like me to tell you about it? You would? All right. Now, the best way to tell the story is to use one of my special detective gadgets, the magic clicker. You've probably never seen anything like this because you've got to be properly trained to use one of these babies. I just press rewind on my magic clicker and we'll go back, back, back in time. Back to night in question. And pause. Phew! Here we are. Now, what you need to know about this quiet little stable is that the lady in charge was a goose. A goose named Mabel. Stable Mabel, they called her because she always liked to keep things organized and quiet and peaceful and... Get away from me, you vultures!
your prayers, Goose and you and Campbell. Now, Cam! Bah! I think you broke my leg, you crazy camel. Goat squashing is one of my hobbies. Gippy, you ought to know better, you old goat. If you don't take your medicine, you're never going to get better. Bah! I hate medicine. I hate camels. I hate living in a dirty little stable. If you think the stable's too dirty, then perhaps you should do something about it. You want us to clean the stable, Mabel? If you're able, come on, everyone. Let's tidy up. You know what else I hate? I hate taking orders from a highfalutin goose. Back me up on this, Cam. We should be doing better than this. Here we are, a couple of prime specimens of high-grade Mediterranean livestock. Stuck in a nowhere stable, out behind a nowhere motel, with a bunch of of nowhere people in it, out in the middle of nowhere. That's depressing. We're not a nowhere stable, Molly. To the travelers who stop at the inn, we're a very important stable. We provide a comfortable resting place, food, friendship for their animals. Friendship? Excuse me. We're supposed to provide friendship? I'll show them friendship, all right. I'll give them friendship right up in the keys or if they keep trying to sleep in my bed. Some of them don't even bother to change the hay after they're done. Um, we're supposed to change the hay? And you want to know who's the worst? It's them darn cows that drive me crazy. Always mooing and chewing and always acting like their milk is better than goat's milk. Just because it comes from a big udder. An udder? What's an udder? You don't know what a udder is. Another what? Not another. An udder. Right. Like the Bible says. Love one another. No, 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 you lame brain. An udder is where milk comes from a moo cow. I thought it came from the fridge. All right, all right. Enough chit-chat now, everyone. We've important things to do. Important things, important things. Like that. Well, like... <laughs> Stable evacuation drill. Huh? Oh, no. You heard me. Stable evacuation drill. Line up, everyone. Stable evacuation? Stable evacuation? We don't need no stable evacuation drill, Mabel. It's a waste of our time. Oh, a waste of time, is it? You'll thank me when a big wind comes up and the barn is about to fall. Every time you start talking, it's like a big wind blows up, you gung-ho goose, bird brain. Well, 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 Estella, what have we got here? Looks like a stable, Sterling. And a very Sterling stable it is, Stella. Sort of reminds me of a really big house made out of popsicle sticks. Oh ha 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 Yeah, yeah. Hey Gramps, does this stable get cable? Oh ha 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 May I help you? Yeah, Toots, you can help us. Who's the lead goose around here? Great. Where's Stella and Sterling, and where are the king's horses? Wow, the king's got two horses? The king's got about 50 horses, Skippy, and our whole regiment is passing through the town on our way to a big celebration at the palace. But it seems uh, all the other inns and stables are full, so we got shipped over here for the night. 
Yeah, lucky us. Well, do you have a reservation? Reservation? Escusa? Maybe you didn't hear us right, Senorita Honker. We are the King's Horses, and we have reservations wherever we want to have them, and I think I'll be making my spot right here. Hey, that's my bed! Yeah, well, Pops, I hope you didn't get any goat fleas on it. Goat fleas? Goat fleas? What is the meaning of that? Yo, Camel, looks to me like you're sleeping in my spot. Oh, contraire, horsey. I'm wide awake in your spot. Move it, you humpback, or else. Now see here. You simply cannot charge in here and begin bullying the other animals about. Is that so? Yes, that's so. This, um, is an orderly stable where we respect the rights of everyone. And, um, what are you doing? I'm getting ready to play my favorite barnyard game. Uh, mmm. And what, pray tell, might that be? It's called Duckity Duckity Goose. I beg your pardon? I said Duckity Duckity Goose. some better manners? I think so, too. Fortunately for Mabel, a hero is about to show up and save her. And do you know who that hero is? Oh, yeah, that's right. You know her, you love her, you bought all of her albums. The one, the only, Sammy Lammy! Hey, where'd that sheep come from? It's Sammy Lammy. She, like, appeared out of nowhere, Sterling. <laughs> baby, baby. Baby, baby. She's singing a love song. Baby, out there. Out there. Out there? Good heavens! She found a baby out there in the desert! We must save it! Mount up, everyone! To the baby! No, no. Lady with a baby. Lady gonna have a baby. You're gonna have a baby, Sammy? Ugh, boil some water. Tear some sheets. Paint the nursery. Not me, you numbskulls. I'm not having a baby. Look, I was out running with the 4th Street flock, see? And they tell me about this woman and her husband who are on their way to town, right? And they say she's gonna have a baby any minute, you know? And get this, are you ready? The baby that she's going to have is going to be the king.
the king? She's gonna have a baby, and the baby's gonna be king? What are y'all talking about, baby's gonna be a king? Yeah, we got a king, and he ain't no baby. This kid's supposed to be the real king. I've checked all my sources on this one, guys. My mother's brother, Frankie, Fluffy Joe down at the city gate, old cotton pants over the temple stable. They all swear it's true. Apparently, you ain't never seen a king like the king this kid is gonna be. Oh, my! A new king? Wow. Right on. Hold on, hold on. Now, looky here. We are the king's horses. Yeah. And ain't nobody told us about a new king. Got that right. And as the king's horses, we'd be the first to know if there was a new king coming. Word. So you know what I say? Come on. I say that ain't anybody who goes around talking about a new king is disloyal to the real king. I say that anybody who goes around talking, telling everybody about the new king, anybody who does that ought to be in really, really big trouble. And that includes you, buddy. Hey, don't call me buddy. I'm a you. What do you say to me? I said I'm a you. You're a me? No, I'm a you. A you is a female sheep. I'm a female sheep? No, a you is a female sheep. No, I is not. Look, I'm not saying you're a female sheep. I'm saying a you is a female sheep. And I'm saying I isn't. Listen, buddy, try to get this. I'm a you. You're a him? No, you, you. I'm a him? Make up your mind, man. These guys are denser than Mabel's meatloaf. Look, horses. Try and connect the dots here, okay? A female sheep is called a you. She is a female sheep. She is a you. She is not a me. And the next person who says that is going to really going to get it. I'm a me. He is a he. And you are a you. That's what I'm saying. Then say it. I did. Isn't that what I said? Oh, enough of this silliness. We have more pressing matters. A new king is about to be born. Mabel's right. Where's the king going to be born, Sammy? That's what I was starting to tell you before Mr. and Mrs. Horsefeathers here butted in. The man and the woman are looking for a place here in our town for the baby to be born. But here's the thing. There is no place. I checked all the hotels and inns everywhere, and they're all full. All of them? Every last one. Oh, no. They're going to get here and go, going around looking and find no place to stay. And then where is that new baby going to be? Out in the cold street? Ooh. Or out in the desolate desert? It's a catastrophe. Even our innkeeper doesn't have any room. He's booked full. Well, then... I say we go into that inn and throw out some of those king soldiers to make some more room. Just try it, you old goat. Simmer down now. Nobody is going to throw anybody out of any of the hotels. Got that right. Listen to the goose. Instead, we're going to make a place to welcome that baby right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm quite serious. A king born in a stable, Mabel? Who ever heard of such nonsense? I think your goosey is a little loosey upstairs, if you all know what I mean. Our stable may be humble, but we can make it warm, we can provide food like milk and eggs, and we can use the hay to make it as comfortable as possible. <laughs> Personally, I think he'd be more comfortable out in the street. Got that right. The street is where our new little king is going to end up if somebody doesn't take some initiative and do something. That kid ain't no king. He's going to be here. He's going to be here. We got to get this ready for the king. We got to get this ready for the king. We got to get this ready for the king. This arguing part kind of went on for a long time. Some of the animals wanted to welcome the new king and some didn't. It's probably better if we just fast forward a little bit. There. 
Like most arguments, you're probably better off skipping most of it. Now see here, I'm not going to allow my new king to sleep in the street. I'm going to make a place ready for him. But Mabel, how do you know if this baby really is king? Now that's what I'm saying. I just know. But Mabel, shouldn't we listen to the royal horses? They're the ones who know what a real king looks like. Just ask them. No, Molly. This is the king. I'm certain of it. Listen to me, all of you. Even though I'm just a loosey goose, and even though we're just a bunch of lowly animals, and even though nobody thinks we're important or even needed, even though people may think we're dirty or stupid, or useless, or insignificant, we have a chance here. Don't you see? We have a chance to receive the king. Make ready a place for him. Take our humble place and make it as worthy of a king as we can make it. It's the chance of a lifetime. And right now, we're the ones in a position to do it. No one else. What do you say? What do you say? Should we make our place ready for the new king? All right then, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. By golly, let's go do it like we've never done it before. We'll make a place for that baby right here in the hay. Indeed, we shall. Operation Hay Baby is underway. Hey, baby. Hey, don't you try to hey baby me, pal. So that's how we decided our little stable, as silly as it seemed, was going to be the place that would welcome the little king. We didn't have much time. I mean, the new king could be here any minute. So Mabel got us cleaning and decorating and decorating and cleaning and getting everything ready at high speed. It was a big job. It's hard to do a quality stable on a modest budget these days. But we tried. Now then, we'll hang the artwork that the chickens did over there. Chicken art. Got it. And we'll try and create a sort of sitting area for the mother in the back room, don't you think? Something with some soft blues and pinks. Very relaxing. Like, that would be a perfect place for the espresso machine. Yes, exactly. The express... Oh, now, Cam, that's ridiculous. It is? Yes. He knows full well we can't afford an espresso machine. Would you go for fruit smoothies? Goodness gracious, what is that? What you mean, what is it? It's a lamp. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant, Gramps. Where are you going to plug it in? Electricity hasn't even been invented yet. <laughs> <laughs> It's for decoration purposes, pony boy. Cam, what on earth? Beanbag chair. Everybody loves a beanbag chair. Beanbag chairs are groovy, man. Every little king should have one. Um, I'm not certain it matches the decor, Cam. Hey, hey, check this out. No crib for a bed? No problem. You stuff a little hay in a feeding manger and presto. A resting place fit for a king. You know, the little king to sleep in there? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's a good one. You're going to let your king sleep in a feeding trough? I hope your goat doesn't get hungry in the middle of the night, or he might nibble the little guy's toes off. You two just need to shush now. If you ask me, you all should pluck the goose and make a good feather mattress for the kid. Now, I'd be willing to help with that. Perhaps it would be best if we just set the decorating aside for now. Let's work on something else. Oh, I know. Line up, everyone. It's time to practice manners and etiquette. Etiquette? What's etiquette? Ooh, ooh. Is an etiquette the same thing as an utter? Watch ya! What, what, what? I, you can't get milk out of an etiquette, you dense donkey. Etiquette means proper and accepted standards of behavior. For example, whenever the baby king comes into the room, it would be proper etiquette to bow. Oh, no problem. I 
I meant bow humbly. Well, what's the point of that? Lowering yourself before the king to show proper respect. When you bow like you did, you're only glorifying yourself. These guys wouldn't last one day in the court of a real king. Let's try something else. Let's say the baby's father walks up and puts the baby right in your arms. You actually get the chance to carry the king with you wherever you go. That would never happen. How do you carry him? I don't know. I don't know. By the neck, maybe? Maybe football style would work. No, no. You make him stand up and walk like a man. We got to get this ready for the king. We got to get this ready for the king. Listen up. Listen up. The proper way to carry a king with you is with utmost reverence and respect. And etiquette. You watch every step very carefully. We're talking about the king here. You're talking about a joke. That's what you're talking about, Goose. You got that right. If there really is a baby out there, which I doubt it, then he ain't no king, okay? And if that baby shows up and his parents actually want to bring him to this table, which is ridiculous, then it would only prove that he is not a king. Preach it. Because real kings don't stay in tiny, dirty, insignificant stables full of funny, foolish, barnyard animals who take their orders from a goose no matter how good their manners are. Y'all are dreaming. Tomorrow when our regiment comes to back to get us, we'll show you what a real king looks like. Yeah. Them's gotta be the most highfalutin horses I've ever met. I hope they get saddle sores. Um, Mabel, excuse me, sorry. I think I need a counseling moment here. Um, I'm thinking maybe the king's horses are right, you know? Now, Molly. I mean, look at them. They're so perfect and proper and, and white and beautiful. And, you know, they do know what a real king looks like, Mabel. And me... I'm just a dumb mule. What do I know? I'm not even a good mule. I'm not even stubborn. Yes, you are. Okay, I am. Don't agree with her. Be stubborn. Aw, oh, you see, I'm a pushover. A dumb pushover. An ugly, dumb, unstubborn pushover. And they're so big and white and beautiful. Or the envy. Classic. Now, now, Molly, chin up. You may not be as smart or as beautiful as the king's horses, but you've got something that they don't. And we all know what that is. No, we don't. Not a clue. She's toast. The horses win at everything, hands down. Oh, stop it now. Molly has heart, guts, grit, character. She does? I do? Of course you do. We all have. And that heart is something that those proud, pretty horses don't know anything about. Any king who's a good king is going to recognize your heart immediately, Molly. And he's going to love that heart. Just you wait and see. Come on. Molly, I'll get you an espresso. Are they gone? Yeah. Yeah. They're gone. I tell you, Stella, these barnyard bums are driving me crazy. Talking about a lady with a baby and a new king and getting ready for the new king. I blame the goose myself. Yeah. Mabel. Mabel and her crazy stable. I mean, look at this place. If I was a baby king, I definitely want to hang out here. There is no baby king, Stella. Uh, right. I know that. I tell you right now, if we were any kind of respectable king's horses, we wouldn't put up with this. Got that right. If we were any kind of respectable king's horses, we'd stand up and say, Hey, there's only one king and this kid ain't it. Amen. 
And I tell y'all truly, friends, if we were any kind of respectable king's horses, horses who love their king, and horses who adored the one who rules over them, uh huh, horses with any pride and integrity, and a shred of courage and righteousness, then we'd be stealing all the furniture and decorations from this stable so that their little party never, ever happens. Yeah, my... Say what? Did you say stealing? Yes, I did. Stealing all the furniture and decorations? Like, just take it? No, just one or two. Of course I'm talking about all of it. But... But... We don't want to be stealing, Sterling. Stealing is wrong. Isn't stealing wrong? Stella, we are the king's horses, and as the king's horses, we have the right to protect the king from anybody else who wants to call themselves king, right? Right, but... You grab that bing bag and the lamp, I'll grab the decorations. Can you believe these guys? They're supposed to be the king's horses, the ones that all the other animals are looking up to. And they're stealing. But I don't think they're going to get away with it. Do you? Because they don't know some of the things that we know. You know? Like, for instance, there's a huge perking camel waiting right around the corner. How's it going? You. No, I'm a camel. Sammy over there, she's a you. She's a me? Don't try to change the subject. You. No, camel. 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 You, camel. You, you, camel. Me, camel? Did he just call you a camel? Did you just call her a camel? You? Right here. No, no, not you, you. Him, you. You and you. All of yous. What on earth are you doing with all of our furniture and decorations for the king? Stealing it. Mm Mm-hmm. His idea. Stealing? You! Right here. That's right, we're stealing it, and as the king's horses, we're not going to stand for this nonsense any longer. We're stealing all of it, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine. You probably know best. You ain't gonna go nowhere, you varmints. Now either you drop the lamp and that beanbag, or you're gonna force us to take them away from you. You? Right here. You think you're going to take these from me? I don't think it. I know it. Ya pony boy. ha ya! Wow. That's impressive, isn't it? ya Get off of me, camel. Nope. But I'm the king's horse. Not moving till you say you're sorry. Sorry? Ugh, maybe we should say it, Sterling. 
Never. I will never say I'm sorry. Not ever. And I'll never let a baby be born in this stable and called a king. Not ever. It will not happen. It already has, Mr. Sterling. What? Christmas calls us to remember Jesus born a child a king Christmas calls us all together Worship Him and sing Emmanuel with us to dwell Emmanuel God is with us Emmanuel Christmas calls us to surrender to the gift of God His Son. Christmas calls us here together. Christ the King has come. Emmanuel, with us to dwell. Emmanuel, God is with us. Emmanuel. present or something to give him, you know? You know, since he's going to be king forever, then he'll still be around in a couple of thousand years when he can actually plug it in. horses. I'm dirty and dumb and ugly. I shouldn't be next to a king. Come and see. Really? Come closer. taking me by the hand, Mabel. I see that, Molly. He likes me better than the pretty horses. He knows your heart. He does? Mm-hmm. And theirs. So that's how it happened that night in Mabel's stable, a long, long time ago. Mabel and Molly and the others made a decision to prepare a place for the king, and that's why the king came. That baby's mother named him Jesus. And all these years later, he's still the king. Oh, there is one more part of the story. But first, we need to fast forward a bit. Ah, 
here we are, more than 2,000 years fast forward. This is the part of the story that has you in it. Tonight, you can make the same decision that those animals did. You can make a decision to prepare a place in your heart for the little king and to receive him there. And if you do, you know what? He will come. Crazy Penguin, this is Full Pajamas. It appears the barn is now really, really secure. Come on, everybody. Stand up with us. Let's sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Mm -hmm. 